wish you all is as fit as a fiddle during this time of the season. Today, we're looking at one of the most technologically advanced cities in the world, Tokyo. Tokyo have came a long way from its origin, from the 15th century, when it was just a small fishing village called Ido. Now, it is populated roughly 1.6 million people and have a reputation of many amazing culture with tourists flocking to get a slice of the Japanese culture. We have to bring you a video about one of the amazing cities in Japan. Japan is full with amazing culture, but for today video, we will talk about Sumidugawa or Sumida River Firework Festival. Now I will pass it to Arip and Eju to explain more to you about Sumidugawa Firework Festival. Let's get started. Begin. The tradition of Sumidagawa fireworks is traced, traced back to 1732 when the fireworks were launched as part of the festival for the dead. The country is in an economic crisis and the people are suffering from hunger and disease at a higher level than usual. Therefore, ceremonies and festivals were fireworks play various role. It is a mourning for the dead as well as a celebration of life and entertainment for the poor. This picture is a picture of the fireworks in Royal Yogoku. And this display has become a tradition in 1810 and competition began to emerge as a yearly festival. The union of Pyrotechnics, Tamanya and Kagia quickly become two of the major competitors. In breaking on a competitive state edition, each union will try to attract the attention of the audience above all else to gain popularity and support the audience grew in number and they begin shouting the names of their favorite fire artists. It has become part of Japan's culture to scream Tamaya Tamaya while watching the fireworks. Although Tamaya came to enjoy Kagia's film, Tamaya cursed a great fire in 1843 and support for the union was lost. The fireworks celebration, if it continues, will be moved far from the city to a far more secure and safer location. The Sumida River Firework Festival is an annual event held on last Saturday in July in Tokyo. This is a firework festival in which constant barrage of fireworks are launched from two separate locations near Sensoji Temple in Taitawat and near Tokyo Sky Tree in Sumida Ward. From near Sakura Bridge is the first location. 9,000 fireworks are launched by a form the Kongyata Bridge. The second year are about 10,000 fireworks are launched. So, spectators can be a grand total of more than 20,000 fireworks on that day. During a terrible famine in 1732, many people died of starvation. The following year, the 8th Shogun Tokugawa Yoshimon held the first ever Rogoku River Firework Festival. This Sunjisai event was held to comfort the spirit of the deceased and pray that those living will be free from famine or other misfortune in the future. During the war, and also because of river pollution, the festivals were discontinued on a number of occasions. But in 1978, the former festival was renamed the Sunida River Firework Festival. It became an annual event in July. The festival is held on the evening of the final Saturday of July each year. There is a wide variety of brilliant fireworks to gaze up at during the festival. For example, the Star Mine, which 
language a large volume of fireworks in steady succession and the exhibition of fireworks, Shikaki Hanabi, which are known for their image of logos and illustration. Warimono or large round firework despite being set off only one time can really pack a punch and are well worth watching it. In addition, there are fireworks with a seasonal flavor such as snail, fish and other creatures. All the way up to pop culture image. Look for a happy face character like a pan man and even Pokemon Pokeballs. And a total of 10 firework companies participate in the competition. Seven of the companies have a connection to the Sumida River and three of them are that known nationwide for their paritonical expertise. All features their latest masterpiece and compete against each other on that day. Sadly for this year, the event in the Sumidagawa River are not being held because of the pandemic of the COVID-19. When it comes to clothing, you might want to don a yukata for the occasion. A lot of local dress in this light summer kimono, adding to the festive atmosphere on the night. No idea where to get one for the next clothing. They can surely show you where to buy it. Thanks, Arab Manager. Now I will hand it over to Razak and Khalid to talk more about kimono and yukata to prepare yourself to wear during the festival. Do you know kimono comes from word ki which means to wear and mono which means thing. The kimono is a traditional Japanese garment and the national dress of Japan. Kimonos come in range of style and patterns. They are typically hand sewn into a T-shape from four single pieces of fabric called tans. It is usually worn with an obi belt alongside a number of accessories such as zori shoes and tabi socks. Traditional kimonos come in a variety of styles. The type of style worn is dictated by a range of specific criteria, including gender, marital status, and event. For example, an unmarried woman will wear a furisode to a formal event, while a man will wear a happy to a festival. Kimonos are made from various handmade and hand-decorated fabrics. Traditionally, these include linen, silk, and hem. Today, Materials like rayon, cotton, and polyester are often used. Unsurprisingly, however, the traditional non-synthetic fabrics are favored. Do you know what is the difference between yukata and kimono? Both are very similar Japanese traditional clothing. For yukata, you can wear any undershirt with it. As for kimono, you should wear nagajoban. Yukata is made for cotton and lion. In the old days, you cannot wear yukata with outdoors, but now people wear it for summer events like fire display. As a kimono is made for silk and polyester. And another difference between yukata and kimono is the hem. The hem of yukata is shorter than kimono. So now, you know the difference between yukata and kimono. Japanese and foreign both enjoy wearing this traditional clothing. Thanks guys. Now I will hand it over to Johan, Ama and Nick to talk about foods that is available during the festival. We cook the sushi rice according to the instructions given in our rice cooker. First, drizzle a little seasoned rice vinegar over the rice and use a spatula to break up the rice by gently cutting through it and folding over itself. Cover the bowl with a damp towel to prevent it from drying out. 
but don't refrigerate sushi rice. Get other ingredients ready, including sheets of nori, and for the filling, we've chosen daikon sprouts, pickled daikon, pickled burdock root, and cucumber. Set the sushi mat on the table. The nori has a shiny side and the dull side. Put the shiny side down with the longest side parallel to the sides of the mat. Then gather about a cup of rice and form it into rough log shape and set it up on the nori. Using your fingers, gently push the rice to cover nori evenly. Line up the filling across the middle of the rice. Using the mat as a support, lift the edge up and over the filling. Use your finger to tuck the filling in place as you roll. Tuck the mat tightly up the roll so only the nori without the rice is exposed. Pull back to tighten the roll. Reposition the mat and roll tightly. Slice the sushi and wipe the knife after each cut with a wet towel to keep the blade from getting too sticky. Cut the roll in half and cut the half into three segments. Arrange the sushi on a plate and serve the sushi with pickle, vinegar, pickle, ginger and wasabi. And don't forget the soy sauce. Oden is a one pot dish which is a little bit different from stew or hot pot. It's more like a simmered dish, a sorted fish ball, fish cakes, deep fried tofu, hard boiled eggs, konyaku, and some vegetables are simmered in soy sauce based broth. Although the fish cake are mostly brown and may not look as appetizing to you, once you eat this dish, it will be your new winter comfort dish. I usually make oden a day before so that all the ingredients will absorb in the delicious broth and it tastes much better the following day. Now, I will show you how to make oden. First, we need fried fish cake, mirin, yam cake, bonito soup stock. First, we need to cut yam cake in half because it's a bit thicker than we actually need. We are gonna open it up and put the two half next to each and slice into small pieces. Then white radish. Make sure all the white radish peel and slice it with the same size. After that, the beef also need to slice thinly before put it into the boiling pot. However, need to put the white radish first because it take the longest and it's actually going to be telling when our oden is okay to finish off as well. After that, put half a teaspoon of bonito soup stock and put the beef and also yam cake as well. We're gonna get some of our round of fish cake into the boiling pot. Last but not least, don't forget our hard boiled eggs and arrange it any way you like just Japanese tra tradition to be separate and look very nice. And we're gonna put mirin known as flavoring and put 3 tablespoons and don't forget about the soy sauce and eat also around 3 tablespoons. After that, you can check whether the white radish is soft enough using your chopstick. Next step is put the top on it and boil them around 30 to 45 minutes. And it's done and definitely easy to make. Hi, my name is Nick and this is how to make tempura better out of your pantry. Firstly, we're going to start by taking equal part of cornstarch and all-purpose flour or rice flour. Well, put this into our mixing bowl. We're going to add one egg yolk. Then we start by adding cold sensor water to our mix. Slowly incorporate it until we get it to the proper thickness. You want to use cold sensor water because it will help make the tempura more crispy. Once it mixed, then you can add a variety of different vegetables or meat to fry. And there, you have how to make tempura better out of your pantry.